We're going to have an interesting topic, and that is the media scrums, the press conferences that we now see after every major pay-per-view premium live event for the WWE and AEW. Are they necessary? It's something that we didn't get for the longest time. AEW brought it back, and now the WWE is on board, and we've gotten some great content from it, and we've gotten some awful content from it as well. So, Tommy, you as a a mainstream sports fan, what are your thoughts of having these press conferences immediately after big events for both AEW and the WWE? Uh, Initial reaction, not a fan. Um, if you think about press conferences, right? Tur- press conferences really turned into media scrums, just different way of saying it. Um, Muhammad Ali was the best to understand the work as- aspect of it, the entertainment aspect of it. Then it has just become overdone. You know, you ever see a press conference, there's always going to be pushing, shoving. They have done it to death in boxing, UFC, all that stuff. If you're object is to get people invested in your show then it's a pre-media scrum or a press conference that's what you're supposed to do to get everybody to be invested in your show that has not happened yet so now this follow-up part of it has kind of what taken from the nfl where or real sports And it's all based upon real sports when you have these questions to be answered. And most of these game, these media things are boring. When your team wins, it's awesome, right? You get that natural celebration if it's a walk-off, blah, 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 blah. But it's almost like copy and paste. It's a great team effort, blah, 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 blah. Um, That's the norm if you had a coach like Bill Belichick, greatest coach of all time. He doesn't really answer many questions. He's just moving forward, blah, 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 blah. So then that would be be ripped apart. What I'm trying to say is I I said two things. You're to hype up your event, but now your event has already happened. And then for real sports, this is not a real sport. And most of the times, only thing that comes out of this is negative. When you said positive stuff, are you talking about rock and Roman? And Cody and Seth, uh, yeah, Rock Roman and Cody, but but also I I really love after a WWE premium live event when Triple H sits at the podium and he goes over the numbers, talks about the stats, talks about attendance, talks about those things that you know you would normally have to wait to hear from, and now you're hearing it immediately after. So if you're writing an article or you're doing a show like ours or you're going to go on social media, you have those numbers ready available. And also, I, I think, and I'll, I'm even going to give uh, credit to our very own Denise Salcedo. I think she does a wonderful job in those media scrums where she asks relevant questions based on the event we had just seen. So I do think there are some positives that come out of these press conferences and media scrums. Uh, I kind of view it as, listen, those are very, very... Uh... I view it as people always try to, it makes news when you trend towards the negative. And I just think if you're going to give those things, then great. Your media press scrum should be about six minutes tops. Um, Because if you just want to hear those numbers, that's what it should be. No one came out injured and uh, we're looking forward to Monday night raw tomorrow. Again, real press. uh, They ask you about the game. If it's football and we're moving on to next week, if it's the playoffs, well, it's game three. Well, we're looking forward to game four Um, wrestling. It's hard. And I feel at times it gets distraction from the, the, the premise of pro wrestling. And then it just, cause people are looking for the scoops and the news. Uh, If we take it the other route where recently Mariah may was in a press media scrum and was asked no questions. How does that make your champion look like a star? If you ever see, if you ever walk a red carpet or if you do any press related things again for debuts and premieres, Dave, you could barely see with the amount of cameras flashing in your eyes. And you're like, oh, okay, you got to ask a couple of questions, but it is for something that has not happened yet. Once something happens, what are you promoting? 
great those numbers that you did. It could also come off as self-gloating. I don't look at it as anything good really, really happens in our world. You can disagree. I'm just going from my end. No, no, no I, 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 I'm, I'm conflicted on this because I'm a talk show host, so I'm ever, I'm never gonna be like, I don't want to hear from the media because I think that's definitely an important piece of anything that's that. going on. No, but I'm, I'm, but I'm saying that. So I, I think it, it, I think that voice needs to be heard. But here are the issues that I have. You mentioned about mainstream sports. After you know the Jets Bills game. When the press is talking to the quarterback or the head coach, what are they talking about? They're talking about the game that was just played on the field. They're not talking about an incident that may have happened 10 years prior or something that it may have happened a, uh, a year ago. They're talking about maybe the week leading into the game, the game itself, or the ramifications after the game. I find myself with a lot of these press junkets for pro wrestling that the last thing that the media is asking or talking about is the event that just took place. And, and then you're, I want to bring up an incident that happened at AEW's All Out with CM Punk because that's the one, that's the media press conference that everybody talks about, right, is, is All Out and what CM Punk had to say in that press conference after All Out. The question that was asked to CM Punk was never asked because CM Punk... Uh, cut the reporter off. So we never knew what that question was going to be until after and had absolutely nothing to do with what CM Punk said. When CM Punk went off for about an eight-minute tirade right next to Tony Khan about all the problems he was having with AEW, if you go back and watch that press conference, every question that was asked by a member of the media had nothing to do with the eight-minute tirade that CM Punk went on. I don't give a shit what your your predetermined question was going to be for CM Punk. How do you not follow up on what CM Punk had just said? So in that way, I can understand everybody kind of shaking their head about why are they letting the quote unquote media in asking questions when relevant questions aren't being asked. So I, I'm kind of conflicted because when it comes they're to this. all trying to get their shit in. To my point, I just feel it's more of a negative and a detraction as opposed to a positive, as opposed like you get you just gave all those great numbers. Oh, we did this, this, this. Awesome. You could have a, a PR person read it and then just walk out. In TNA, we really don't do that. The other part is the times that we have kind of were initiated by me when wrestlers got hurt. And you know why I put that news out there? Number one because I know wrestling fans were, were concerned and the other part. So it doesn't get out for rumors and innuendos or all stuff like that. But my main bottom was because people watching the show then realize, Oh wait, somebody may just got hurt and I care about these people. And I just want people to know like, Hey man, this person's okay. They're either cleared or they're not medically cleared. And they got checked out by the doctor or they had to go to the hospital. They needed stitches, all that stuff. That was just because of the concern for the human being and also the relationship with the fans. And then if something happens where you don't say it, then it's going to start speculation. And exactly from what you said, everybody should have been talking about this great pay-per-view. And yes, this was, you know, back then was punk caused all that. But every media, every, after every show, they're talking about what is said in the press conference as opposed to talking about the great show. And that shouldn't be. That's why I just don't like them. But there's a way, but isn't that more on the, the wrestlers and the performers themselves? I mean, you know, in, in major sports, you know, in baseball and, and NHL and the NFL, they're taught on how to talk to the media. Yes. You know, pro wrestlers have have great personalities and charisma. I mean, isn't that part of the job is to, is to understand the media, the importance of the media? And and there's also times for the media, like maybe this is the only time you get to be able to talk to a Tony Khan or talk to a Triple H. So that is an opportunity to ask questions about possible free agents with your company or some or rumors that are going on. That's an important part. 
That's a, an extremely important part to the business. Not to people whose only agenda is to ask gotcha questions. Or if the other part, Dave, and this is why I keep saying it. Time out, Dreamer. Okay. Dave, when I just said that, you're, you're like not in your head like you agree. I'm not hearing anything positive listening to you guys talk. You talked, you know, you brought something up, Dave, and Tommy backed you up. Oh, the thing with The Rock and uh, and Roman and Seth and Cody, that was a segment that could have been on Raw or SmackDown. Correct. That's not a scrum or a press conference. That is a, that's a, that's, that's something that could have been on TV on a Monday night or a Friday night. We're talking about what's going on after these pay-per-views and the journalists, the pro wrestling media, whatever you want to call them, that are there asking the questions. Where it seems like no matter which incident you point to, it's always negative. The men and women that get to interview the the players or go to the post-game press conference these journalists, the majority of them went to school for journalism and went to school for what they do. Is that, would that be a yes or no? I, I, I would say the majority of them, yes. Right. Have the majority of pro wrestling journalists or media gone to school for journalism? I, I mean, I, I'm, ge- I'm going to guess no, but, but again, Bully, I can't. But then that's discounting the, the quality people that do ask good questions and and are credible okay you know i would say that there is a small handful of those you are waiting for them to ask you a question that has nothing to do with the event that they just trying to trap you catch you do trip you up on your words dave you see every day what these internet dirt sheets do with my words here on uh, uh, on busted open but, 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 all right, but then, but here's an, here's an opportunity for those questions to be asked to you face to face. So like, if there is a journalist that may have grabbed a headline or a gotcha headline or clickbait, now here's the opportunity for it to be asked in front of your face and be asked the right way. I, and I understand where you're coming from bully, but this is also on AEW and the WWE to make sure, Hey, listen, not everybody is given a credential. You have to apply for a credential to be a part of that press conference. Now, that's on WWE and AEW to make sure that the credentials that they're giving out are going out to credible journalists that do cover the sport and cover it the right way. So that's more on WWE and AEW than it is for somebody to get in because you have to apply to get that credential to be in the room to ask those questions. To help tighten up the process, I don't think that's a horrible idea. I know that on any day of the week, I'm allowing Dave LaGreca to come to my press conference because I know he's asking questions about the talent and the product, not to ask gotcha questions. If Chris Van Vliet picks up the phone right now and says, hey, Bubba, I want to interview you. Yeah, sure, Chris, you got it, no problem. Because I know as a wrestling journalist, he's he's wants to get some insight he wants to get some stuff and when chris asks a really hard question or two i just know that he's doing his journalistic duty to press me about something that's important as opposed to coming right out of the bat with a question that has nothing to do with the match just because you're trying to get that video and you're that clickbait headline uh and then okay I was going to say, I personally, I mean, I don't care who they let in. Yes, it should be screened better, more. I enjoy the, what we do, Royal Rumble, um, WrestleMania, the pre-stuff. Once it's over, this machine keeps rolling. So what are we going to talk about in the past? Only thing you're going to talk about is whatever you try to either get somebody with or something that already happened. If you watch most media stuff, they're boring. When do they get exciting? When the talent says something. I'm not just talking about wrestling. I'm talking about, you know, did you hear the comments? News uh, reports from then the local news will pick up or a beat writer will, because Dave, you worked in the NFL. They're normally boring. You got to sit there after the game. They walk in. Here's the thing. Here's a couple of questions. You're in, you're out, you're done. 
unless it's something that makes headlines like playoffs, playoffs, post media, post media scrum, where there's a tirade, there's this, there's that, and then it's it's off to the but race. That, but that's all. But uh, you know what though? But that's part of it. Like you know, a great example would be Marshawn Lynch when he refused to talk to the media. He got fined. Yeah, he was forced to go on that podium. But but again, they have classes for all the athletes so they know how to talk to the media. You mentioned Bill Belichick. Nobody was a worse a worse yes. coach on the podium than Bill Belichick because he gave you absolutely nothing. But then somebody who was extremely entertaining and gave you a lot was Bill Parcells. He loved working with the media. He was media savvy. I, I you know, I, I think wrestling could be the same way. It's entertainment, so be entertaining. And then and then understand, hey, when there's a tough question that you may be uncomfortable with, how to deal with that question. And like Bully even said, hey, you know what, Chris Van Vliet? Chris Van Vliet's going to ask you great questions, but he's also going to ask you tough questions that may be relevant to what's going on right now. You have to, hey, Triple H or Tony Khan, if you're in that and you're you're in that atmosphere, you're gonna have to answer those tough questions. That's part of the deal, Tommy. You may not like it, but that's but that's 2024. That's part of it right, right. now. You're you're gonna have to learn to deal with the media. I enjoyed the Japanese version of after the match. I did. Um it has gotten so bastardized and so they're just like Here's the one press conference I liked when MJF came in and was just cutting promos and then left 100% in character and helped promote the MJF. Um, that was kind of my last ones that I remember in the sense of, of any notable worth because after that, I just think, A, if you're just going to give me stats and statistics, it's boring, and B, what outcome can it come out so I work in a reactionary business. I don't think it's doing anything positive, in my opinion. This is my podcast. This no, is okay, my opinion. it's fine. And yeah. I don't know. I can't tell you what great words. The Hard Times promo came out of a press conference. They furthered an angle that helped continue it. The only press conference, and again, it was pre, not post, was The Rock walking in with Roman. And all of that was set up. We don't live in a real world here. So then real world questions really can't be answered. If you want to, you know, ask Triple H this question of like, what was your creative process of, of going into that? Well, if he tells it, then it's the magician giving away the answer. So I don't see what good comes out of these things. That's all. That's my, you want to ask me a question? Cool. Uh, I'm no comment. Next question. But, but there you go. But then you, it's boring, you, and that's not pro wrestling. But but well, well, listen. But it doesn't have to be. Cody Rhodes after winning the world title at WrestleMania at the press conference afterwards, it was amazing. You don't Tom, have to ask. But Dave, go ahead. Dave, I'm sorry. Tommy has a valid point, and I'm going to use an example with you to back it up. Okay. You recently interviewed Tony Khan on Busted Open, right? Mm -hmm. Was it exciting? No. At all. So Busted Open could sit here and go, Tony Khan exclusive with Dave LaGreca sit down. Whoa, Tony hasn't been on Busted Open for so long. He doesn't do Tony time. What are we going to get? Dude, you got two questions in in like 30 minutes. It was, because he it was just rough. kept going on and on and on and on. But I'm sure you as a good journalist would have had, instead of two, maybe five questions Four questions that allowed Tony to talk about his product, and then maybe one pressing like question about, "Hey, Tony, ratings, blah 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 blah." Is that your journalistic duty? Isn't it? Yeah, but and we and, in and, those and, and hold on, okay, in the press conferences that we see with AEW, where Tony Khan sits there next to every single talent. How many of those pro wrestling journalists and media ever ask Tony something pressing? It's rare. Because they're all trying to curry favor, kiss ass, chase the hug, and get a job. The intentions are not right on multiple levels.
But that, but that I think but I think you're brushing over you're, you're generalizing there. I don't think that's fair to everybody that's in that room. Now you may be right about some people that are in that room, but there are some people that are. And 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 I'll use that Tony Khan interview that I did. You know, was it the most entertaining interview I've ever done? Obviously, it wasn't. But we got some good nuggets. We did get some things about. Nigel McGinnis and Brian Danielson out of him, and we did get some stuff about the media rights that happened and was and was done two weeks later. So, but you got to try to get those questions in, and in that case, you know that was a live interview, so that was different. But if I was a reporter and that was an interview that was done afterwards on a media scrum, I would have just took those two nuggets that he gave me that were gold, and those are the only things that I would have reported on, and I wouldn't have talked about the rest of it. There's ways around that too. And and Tommy, you know what? That press conference afterwards, it's not Monday Night Raw. It's not SmackDown. The purpose of it isn't supposed to be entertaining. It's supposed to be information. But th- what they're Tommy doing is it. Saying is the press conference falls under the same umbrella of professional wrestling and sports entertainment. So there should be a degree of entertainment to it. Yes, Tommy? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes or no? Yes. And often with, I don't find them, when, when you have the unique talents that can command and control every other person in the room, i.e. MJF, i.e. Triple H, it's, it's a different story. But most talents aren't savvy enough to control the whole room. And it doesn't matter what comes out. I just don't think you're, we're using words like you're saying I'm generalizing or broad stroke. I'm not saying every last reporter. Okay. I was so proud of Izzy before she started wrestling, how she would go to these uh, press conferences. Maybe and, one and, of the and, best ones, by the way. <laughs> and Izzy would always ask great questions about the performer, the character, the match, Blah, blah, blah. And this is coming out of the mouth of a 16-year-old, 14-year-old girl at the time. Why does the 14-year-old girl have the brains to ask the good questions as opposed to the 35-year-old guy who's trying to ask him, got your question, so he could use it as clickbait? Well, I mean, but, but, but unfortunately, that is the wrestling spectrum because, like, all right, Tommy, if, and I don't even know if he's the Jets beat writer anymore, Manish Mehta with, at the time when I was working with the NFL, he was the Jets beat writer for the New York Post. So Manish would go in and ask questions at the press conference. Those questions that he would ask would be specifically for him, for his article that he's writing for the New York Post that night that's going out on the presses. So, like, for me, unless these questions at these pro wrestling press conferences are being used for an article or for a show directly – then those questions shouldn't be asked. Like they should be directly for a piece that is being written, that's being used, whether it's on in a newspaper or a website. I don't think that's the case right now, unfortunately. I think it's I I, I think with this master's class, guys, I think we're all kind of right here. Like I think Tommy's right, Bully. I think you're right, but I think I'm right as well. I just don't see what good comes out of it, and I feel they're boring. That that's Dave. Um, we're going to do a modern day media scrum, uh, with Sergeant Slaughter versus the Iron Sheik. Sarge, how you feel? I feel great. I had a great match with the guy. Yeah. Worked with him in the AWA. Uh, really, we, we did some cool stuff together. Oh yeah. No, this, this blood, I stuck a razor in my head and uh, I bled. So did he, we bled buckets. We took great bumps and we're just going to move on to the town next time. Would you want to hear that? It's not a real sport, so you can't look at it. If you're going to ask specific questions, you can't. Again, boring football. Well, I got my ass sacked to me. My offensive line sucked. Well, they're never going to say that because then you're throwing your teammates under the bus. But these are real things. It's just, to me, wrestling is about entertainment. And if you pull the curtain back too much, then you're going to lose your industry. So why have it? Guys, if it's free. If it's pre, I'm all for it. I don't care who's in the room. I like when I go and do the, we did the last one I did was what? Royal Rumble. Uh, I loved it. I like a lot of the people too. I don't care if they have one follower 
or 20,000 followers or 2 million followers. Everybody. When so you wouldn't want to be, you wouldn't want to be in front of, in front of Cody Rhodes with a microphone right after he won the championship. Or Cody or, is different because that was a two year story. A and again, I would then, yes, I would interview Roman and Cody. Those would be my only two people that they're that doing well, interviews today. Well, Tony and Triple H or AEW and the WWE pick and choose which wrestlers are going to be on that podium. The 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 the, the news outlets Not don't they do? But it should also all be in character, in the sense of man, Cody, I won, I did it, I finished the story. Uh, I'm such it's it's a great moment. Roman, no comment. I'm still going to be a dickish heel. That's all. Guys, talking about Tommy saying that it's boring or what actually goes on. Remember back in the day when we would read The Wrestler or PWI or Inside Wrestling, the one-on-one -on -one interviews that they would do with wrestlers? Yep. Yeah. Do you guys remember that? One-on-one -on -one yeah. with? How often did those interviews ever happen? They Never. didn't. They came from, they came from the mind of the writer. They were and we believe made up. They were all made up. Why did they make it up? Because in making up the interviews, they can make it a lot more interesting of a read and more fun for the reader. But it's a different era, because, though. It's, it's a completely point, different era. I'm, not, I'm, I'm backing up to Tommy's point of him thinking it's boring. It can be boring at times. You're leaving your worked industry in the hands of of people that are trying to, in the hands of some people, Dave, some people that are trying to expose your worked industry or air the dirty laundry of your worked industry even more than it has been already. No, well, you can control that and you can control the people that are going to be on the podium. You, and then you can also make sure that the people who are getting credentials to these press conferences are credible journalists that get the opportunity to ask these questions Dave, i i just don't believe it's silencing the media go, go ahead nobody's talking about silent tommy is saying he, he feels that they're that i'm not they're, talking about silencing the media yeah i just they're boring and what i want to be entertained when i watch pro wrestling i don't want to be uh dave i just watched bill after sit down when they did the pro wrestling talk, talk show on tbs and Magnum TA was the first guest. And they literally asked him as U.S. champion about Hangman Bobby Jaggers in the Pacific Northwest. And I was like, wow, that was an interesting question. And he talked about him. And yeah, you know, si he's recently become a rule breaker, all this stuff. And then they went, the last person was Nikita. Me and Nikita have different values. Me and Nikita uh, fight. We have a similar style in the sense of we try to end our matches quick. You know why? Because... As the, the match goes down longer, I'm tired. Like, And he made it so real. And I was like, this is fascinating. This is all that I loved in pro wrestling. And Magnum TA with Bill Apter made me want to be further invested in this Nikita Koloff feud that I've already known the because it happened so long ago. They're not done like that anymore. That's it. Well, that, but, but we don't do that. We don't do interviews on this show like that. I'm not talking about our show. You're this... Master's class about the the friggin' post medium scrum. They suck. They're boring. They more of the <laughs> negative, and that's it. Those are my fucking comments. I'm out. 